game reboots are made to breathe new life into established franchises that might be losing steam. Throughout the years, we've seen great examples which have succeeded in revitalizing their respective series, and also there are some that have done more bad than good. I'm Sai for WhatCulture.com, and here are 10 video game reboots that buried franchises entirely. Number 10, Alone in the Dark 2008. The survival horror genre has spawned numerous video games such as Resident Evil and Silent Hill, yet one series that has been forgotten over time is Alone in the Dark. Despite predating most of its peers, until recently the franchise remained largely dormant for years which can be attributed to its 2008 reboot. On the surface, Alone in the Dark seems like a true next-gen experience for the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 era. The graphics are well done with the fire effects being some of the best during its time, while the art style is effectively Spooky. However, the reboot suffers from trying to implement ambitious yet unrefined ideas that bring the experience down. The inventory system, a staple in the survival horror genre, allows the player to access the protagonist's jacket in real time, which adds a layer of realism but at the cost of feeling tedious. Melee combat using the analog stick was novel for the time, but it doesn't really play how it should, instead feeling sluggish. And finally, the car physics are a nightmare as the vehicles have no weight to them and make exploration feel like a chore. Alone in the 2008 was clearly made with passion by the developers who wanted to try new things, but due to its execution it failed to be the serious comeback it sought to be. Number 9 Golden Axe Beast Rider 2008 Golden Axe, Sega's classic beat-em-up series, was surprisingly revived for the modern generation with Golden Axe Beast Rider. Unlike most entries on this list, the reboot's change in direction actually made sense, as turning the series into a third-person action-adventure fit the franchise's fantasy setting and with decent execution could have been a bona fide success. Unfortunately, Beast Rider falls flat as the game suffers from technical issues and poorly implemented mechanics. The game is plagued by numerous glitches as well as frame rate drops. At the same time, its graphics were considered inexcusable even by 2008 standards. Character models look dated and seemed more like an HD version of a PS2 game, a fair point of criticism as this generation of gaming started to focus on visual fidelity. Combat could be frustrating due to the game's mechanics. Enemies would go blue and orange and depending on the colour, players would have to press a specific shoulder button. The problem is the game suffers from input delay, not to mention a terrible camera, which would often leave you open for attack. Number 8 Final Fight Streetwise 2006 in the mid-2000s, numerous video game franchises opted for a grim and gritty approach, and anything otherwise was deemed for kids. Final Fight, a sister franchise to the Street Fighter games, fell prey to this trend as they attempted to revive the series with 2006's Final Fight Streetwise. In an attempt to cater to the Grand Theft Auto crowd, the game was a gritty reimagining of the typically more colourful Final Fight games, with characters swearing left and right and mature elements being thrown around. From a gameplay perspective, Streetwise also seems to take cues from the then-emerging Yakuza series with its beat-em-up gameplay mixed with RPG elements but to lesser results. Combat works decently when it's one-on-one, -on -one, but when facing multiple enemies, the game's terrible camera can turn fighting into a nightmare. Upgrading your character doesn't reward the player with incentives, while exploration is tedious due to the poor design and unappealing colour palette. And so, just like most franchises that went for the grim and gritty reboot, Final Fight lost what made the series special in the first place, and Streetwise became the final game in the series. Number 7 SimCity 2013 2013's SimCity reboot is a revival that not only killed the franchise, but led to the closure of Maxis's Emeryville Studios. The first major instalment in the series since 2003's SimCity 4, the game's launch was a disaster, with many gamers calling it unplayable. For starters, the game featured a smaller city compared to previous entries, which disappointed fans who had become accustomed to building large environments. Many of the game's city management mechanics were also streamlined for the worse, taking away a lot of the depth and complexity that made the other games so enjoyable to play. But the infamous aspect of SimCity 2013 has to be its online DRM. This meant that even playing the game's single player mode required gamers to always be connected to the internet. This problem was exacerbated further by server issues and long wait times that prohibited players from enjoying the game at launch. While some reboots bury their respective series for a couple of years, it seems that SimCity 2013 killed the franchise permanently as the series has not received a mainline title ever since. Number 6 Soul Calibur 5 2012 
The character roster is one of the most important elements in any fighting game, and changing them too much is a huge risk. Sometimes it works, like with Tekken 3's introduction of Jin Kazuma and the now beloved new additions. In some cases, it can lead to backlash, such as Street Fighter 3 New Generation abandoning most of the beloved World Warriors. Soul Calibur 5 sadly falls into the latter category. The game takes place years after the previous game as it attempts to introduce a new selection of fighters. In concept, that might work, but Soul Calibur 5 has some of the worst designs you could introduce to a video game. Gone are fan favourites like Sophitia and Taki, and instead we have inferior replacements such as the whiny self-righteous Patroclos Alexander, who unfortunately for players has to lead the game's story mode. From a gameplay perspective, Soul Calibur V is a competent fighter, but without a cast of characters for players to root and choose from, the game falls flat on its face. It's no surprise then that Soul Calibur VI immediately reverses the decisions made by this failed soft reboot. Number 5, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 2015 Going back to the Pro Skater subtitle seemed like a logical choice, as the Tony Hawk franchise didn't have a new entry since 2008's Proving Ground, but instead the attempt at reviving the brand would end up in disaster. For starters, at launch it required an 8GB update as the title didn't even contain the main game on the disc. The levels are all so uninspired with a lack of innovation compared to previous titles, while some feel like carbon copies of previous tracks. The physics system is also broken, with the player's momentum feeling off which could lead to difficulty performing tricks and combos. Players were left frustrated as their skaters could end up knocking themselves off the board due to bugs and glitches. At the same time, despite having an online multiplayer component, Pro Skater 5 had connectivity woes that prevented players from truly enjoying this feature. All of these led to Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 being critically derided and not the franchise comeback that the series sorely needed at the time. Number 4, Bomberman Act Zero 2006 I mean, just look at it. You can immediately tell what's wrong with Bomberman Act Zero. The series has always been known for its colourful visuals, simple gameplay, and cutesy characters. And so, of course, Act Zero decides to scrap that altogether for the poor man's Halo with its sci-fi presentation and muddy graphics. During single player, the enemy AI is way too simplistic and lacks a decent challenge factor. Multiplayer, a staple among Bomberman games, is another thing that Act Zero completely drops the ball with its FPB, first person and battle mode as it suffers from a poor camera that will frustrate. In fact, despite being called first person battle mode, it's presented in the third person perspective. But that's not all as Act Zero also lacks online multiplayer, a feature that the Xbox 360 showcased at the time of the console's launch. It's no surprise then that Bomberman Act Zero is considered one of the worst video games of all time and is often seen as an example of what not to do when rebooting a beloved property. Number 3, Space Raiders 2002. Space Invaders is an arcade classic and is one of the most influential video games out there. The premise is simple, it's a top-down shooter where you shoot down aliens on a 2D plane. But in a misguided attempt at modernising the franchise for a contemporary audience, 2002's Space Raiders was released. First of all, the game was released in the UK as Space Invaders Invasion Day because the trademark for Space Raiders is owned by the cheapest possible crisps you could find, which somehow seems relevant because this game is cheap and tacky. Space Raiders is presented in a realistic third-person perspective because that's what you think of when you think of Space Invaders, right? Beyond baffling design choices though, the game doesn't innovate the gameplay loop at all. Sure, the title has modern graphics, but underneath its contemporary presentation, Space Raiders has nothing new to offer. And if that's not bad enough, the graphics are poor even for its time, while its audio is even worse, turning the game into a tedious button masher that assaults the senses in every way possible. The franchise would thankfully receive better revivals later on with Extreme and Infinity G but Space Raiders, on the other hand, has been thankfully forgotten by time. Number 2, Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 Sonic 06 is a game whose shadow has loomed over the series for years. Its reputation sullied the once beloved series and turned the blue blur into a laughing stock of the video game industry. But the question is, what makes Sonic 06 so bad? The reboot was released in an unfinished state, pushing for a 2006 release date. Sega forced Sonic Team to release the game for Sonic's 15th anniversary, whether they were done or not. The result is a buggy mess with numerous glitches and some of the longest loading screens out there. Characters can 
end up clipping through environments and the physics system is downright broken. But beyond the technical issues, Sonic 06 has a story that takes itself too seriously with a bloated cast. Who could forget, even if they wanted to, the infamous kiss between Sonic the Hedgehog and Princess Elise the Human. And so years onward, Sonic 06 would haunt the franchise with Sonic Team abandoning the adventure formula established in 1998. And while fan mods like Sonic P06 prove that the game could have been much better, the damage done by this reboot is irreversible. And number one, Duke Nukem Forever 2011. Duke Nukem Forever's development is one that has become infamous among the video game community. From the numerous delays to the troubled production, the long wait ensured that when the title finally did come out, expectations could not be met. In 2011, Duke Nukem Forever would be released and was flooded with backlash. It was 15 years since Duke Nukem 3D and since then the first person shooter genre had evolved, which is one of the reasons why Forever failed. With repetitive environments, bad level design and poor enemy AI, the title just couldn't keep up with its contemporaries. The game also suffers from numerous technical issues from frame rate drops and glitches as well as lackluster graphics and the lack of wow factor that its predecessor had. From a narrative perspective a lot of the jokes had also aged even by 2011 standards with dated references and humour that seemed out of place in the video game industry by that point in time. And so what was slated to be Duke's big comeback ended up killing his franchise for good. Prompting many fans to look at the game and quote Duke himself, blow it out to us. Ah, but here's the thing, not every reboot that fails is necessarily bad. Click the link on screen now to watch our rundown of 10 great video game reboots that failed anyway. Make sure to leave a comment down below on video game reboots that you absolutely hated. Like this video, hit that subscribe button, head over to whatculture.com for more content every day. I've been Cy for WhatCulture and have a good week.